Uh, Shweta's talk is actually uh, the best paper award at the state conference, uh, Uttarakhand State Ophthalmological Society, a leopard cannot change its spots. We are waiting to hear why. <laughs> at the outset, I would like to thank AIOS for giving me the opportunity to present this case. A 67-year-old female first presented to us in 2010 with bilateral diminution of vision uh, and low-grade vitritis in the right eye. Apart from a positive MANTU test, no other systemic in investigations were positive. After a course of topical steroids, vitritis had subsided after eight weeks. She, it was then followed by an episode of optic neuritis in the left eye three months later, which also subsided with a standard treatment with steroids. She had two more episodes of bilateral low-grade vitritis in the following year that responded well to treatment with oral and topical steroids. A detailed uveitis panel each time was non-contributory. Subsequently, she underwent cataract surgery in the left eye. She was then lost to follow-up for about seven years and returned in January 2021 with bilateral diminution of vision and floaters for a year. And uh, vision had dropped drastically in the right eye and uh, she had AC cells 2 plus and WIT cells 2 plus. Media was hazy in the right eye. There was advanced glaucomatis cupping in both eyes with extensive RP alteration at the posterior pole, more prominent in the left eye. And the swept so OCT at this time showed epiretinal membrane in both eyes with subretinal fluid in the right eye so we can't, uh, and we subretinal hyperreflective no material so between the RP and the Brooks membrane in the left eye, as seen in the image below. Leopard spot appearance was confirmed on autofluorescence and on fundus fluorescent angiography. It was more prominent in the left eye. She had a normal peripheral blood smear and a few nodular opacities in bilateral lower lung zones. And CSF analysis and bone marrow preparation did not show any evidence of lymphoma infiltration. The PET CT scan of the whole body revealed few hypermetabolic mediastinal and hyalur lymph nodes, which on biopsy showed reactive lymphadenitis. She underwent a diagnostic vitrectomy in the left eye, which showed atypical lymphoid cells with few mature lymphocytes and macrophages. And B cell markers were all negative. T cell markers were positive in a few cells. And the features were su suggestive of a lymphoma. These are her slides showing, showing atypical lymphoid cells. And uh, IHC markers, CD20 is negative and CD3 is positive. A diagnosis of bilateral primary vitro-retinal lymphoma of T cell origin with ocular involvement only was made. She received intravitreal methotrexate injections over the course of an entire year, 25 injections per eye, and she experienced corneal epitheliopathy and transient IOP rise, which were managed well with topical medication. At the end of a year-long follow-up, these are her images, and we can see that she is in remission with resolution of the hyperreflective material and the SRF. Intraocular lymphoma is of two types, primary and a secondary IOL. The most common form of uh, PIOL is PVRL. Around 80% of PVRLs involve the brain subsequently, while 20% of PCNSL PCN will develop PVRL later. More than 95% of PVRL are non-Hodgkin's diffuse large B-cell lymphoma, and less than 5% are T-cell origin. Uh, they are more common between on uh, the age of 50 to 60 years and more common in females. And clinically, it is not possible to differentiate between the two. And on fundus examination, signs to look out for include vitritis in string of pearls pattern, vitreous sheets, aurora borealis pattern, subretinal infiltrates, and uh, on OCT, we need to look for subretinal hyperreflective material and the leopard spot appearance on autofluorescence and fundus fluorescent angiography. The gold standard for diagnosis is histopathology and IHC. It is imperative to withhold steroids uh, two weeks before the vitrectomy, before the diagnostic vitrectomy to prevent, to avoid the lympholytic effect of steroids. And the and diagnosis is challenging considering the limited fragile specimen and the low number of neoplastic lymphocytes, previous treatment with corticosteroids and the skill and the experience of the cytopathologist. 
all these result in a high uh, rate of false negative biopsies. And recent recommendations include uh, less invasive methods such as an aqueous tap to detect certain mutations. So actually we're running short of time. Can sure. you wrap Can up? I, yeah, sure. Please, Treatment options for bilateral PBRL are not um, standardized and uh, they include intravitreal methotrexate and rituximab and systemic options include chemotherapy and radiotherapy. And these are the characteristic role CT findings to look out for. And uh, as we know, the diagnosis is challenging, often masquerading as chronic uveitis or vitritis. And it is delayed due to lympholytic effect of steroid therapy. And it is necessary to look for imaging biomarkers such as hyperreflective subretinal infiltrate, sub RP deposits, RP undulation, clumps of vitreous cells, and the leopard spot appearance. Thank you.